Akash, welcome to the Carbon Exposure Project. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks very much. Thanks, man. Um, Super excited. Yeah, as am I. I'm, I'm, I was just telling you before uh, we started rolling that I'm really keen to learn from you. We, just a bit of background, if, you, if you'll indulge me. So we've, we've met only once before, but I think we got along really, really well. I think the, the banter and the dialogue spark was, was there, was spark was there yeah. right? I, but I find, obviously, the, the work that you're doing really fascinating. But effectively, you're the first scientist that I've got on, on the podcast. And the scientific voice and scientific community is so integral in terms of just the rigor and the integrity that science has to, and, 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 it's a, and it's a voice that's been missing oftentimes from the dialogue. I think we are talking off camera a little bit earlier around scientists in general are really open to discussing error, right? They're really yeah. conscious about it because it's a, it's a, they understand that in order to disclose that, it it's then helps them to actually obviously reduce those error bars over time. And that, that narrative has effectively been hijacked by many well-intending folks in the media side. But I wanted to address that and dive head in and really learn from you from a scientific perspective. Let's talk about nature-based solutions and let's do a deep dive. So that's my very broad introduction. Can you give us a little bit of introduction about how you, A, first arrived in this space and then the type of work that you're doing? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I think the conversation is going to be really nice. I'm I think excited. So um, I, I was one of those really nerdy biology students back in school. Yep. And um, I initially thought I want to go towards medicine, mm -hmm. but I I ended up in engineering. Okay, uh, that was uh, one of those decisions as a teenager I made. Mechanics or uh, electronics, or? communication, okay. engineering. Yeah, okay. and my first job was actually a software engineer. Okay, but my my cubicle was near the window, and it was actually overlooking a national park. Okay, great. And at about six months in, I was like, I don't want to be here. I want to be there. I want to be there. And um, my my girlfriend, my wife, not my wife, she science. was like, why don't you give it a shot? Like, uh, you still have the acumen for it, for the, this, for the science part of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I got into environmental sciences. And this is back in 2011. And I was in India. Okay. And it was just an emerging field. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember my dad, uh, he comes from a, a diplomatic government background. And he was nervous. He's like, are there even jobs for this? Are there jobs for this? And I was like... <laughs> It's, you know, I'll, if you're good at it, you'll, you'll find a space for yourself. That, that was his, The exuberance that was of youth, but I, exactly. I agree completely with that statement then and, and still now. Yeah, and uh, I, as a master's student, I ended up working on marine turtles in, in the eastern coast of India. Oh, fascinating. I spent time in the central part of India helping friends do work on crocodiles. And it, it was... What type on, of work? If, uh, we were ecology work. We were looking at... Uh, he was looking at how... Uh, how crocodiles, the gharials in India, how they choose their nesting sites on the banks and how it'll change depending on the flow of the water and mm -hmm. the food that's available. Super interesting study in the hinterlands of India. Love that field work. And I did that's, field work. The co co crocodiles with the really long and the, and the snout at the, the yeah, that's the, end, the yeah. one. And they're very shy. People, uh, I think, uh, make them look a lot more evil than they are. They're very shy creatures. Yeah. And that time I spent in the field was amazing and I'm like, I, I love it here. Great. No matter how tired I am, I love it. And I ended up teaching afterwards for a while as a science teacher uh, and then as an environmental science lecturer. But oh, I love this. So you, like, there's a very curiosity me driven, me meandering path. Like, like the river that the Gharials lived oh, in and I loved it. But there was a part of me that was like, I, I love the classroom, mm -hmm. but I love the forest as well. Okay. And I want to find a balance between the two where I can do both. Oh, cool. And um, I ended up volunteering for a project that was looking at um, langurs, the, the primates in mm -hmm. the Himalayas. That was my first time going to the mountains in India. Wow. And it's the mystic Himalayas, right? Sure. And we were camped up at 4,000 meters. We were hiking 15 kilometers a day following primates. And I just fell in love with the forest and the ecosystem. And that's a very different forest from the ones you see in tropical Southeast Asia. Of course, Asia, different right? forest. And I was like, okay, I want to I want to learn more about the forest. Mm -hmm. And I, m I wanted to move from an individual species to the ecosystem. Okay. And I feel like that that's where my space was. So I joined NUS as a PhD student mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, back then it was the Applied Plant Ecology Lab. And I decided to work uh, on understanding what drives forest change in the Himalayas. Okay. Partially because um, I'm an optimist mm -hmm. and there's there's always this conversation that's doomsday-like, apocalyptic, that the world is ending, the, the forest is on fire, there's deforestation. But the Himalayas is actually this space, very important space between, politically important as well. Very but much so. 
in terms of like just the geographical exactly. part of things but as well. But in terms of forest, there's actually a lot of forest recovery in that part. Even I was like, wow, this, uh, this, this patches of deforestation. It's it's natural part of the ecosystem because mm -hmm. of the India's development, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, parts of China as well. But then in within that space, there's so much forest recovery happening, and especially Nepal. And this has been well documented now with spatial right. studies. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that. That was part of my PhD. And I was using satellite-based um, methods to understand that. Uh, I had a small project where we went and interviewed farmers mm -hmm. in Nepal because it turns out that one of the biggest opportunities for forest recovery and regrowth is abandoned agriculture land in Nepal. Really? It, 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 was, it was like a really serendipitous moment for me. I was like, oh, I want to look at forest recovery. I'm like, oh, where is a lot of this forest coming? And we looked out, it used to be farmland before. Mm -hmm. and, and Nepal has a very old tradition of community forestry. So community forestry combined with you know, um, a lot of youth moving out of Nepal and then this become the land becomes available and some farmers just let it grow and mm -hmm. the forest takes it what covers. it can. Yeah. Uh, in some places, they actively plant. Mm -hmm. So I love that part. And I was like, wow, this in, in the larger talk of climate change and carbon sequestration and sustainable development, there is a strip of land that is doing it yeah. already while everyone else is talking about it. I love it. that sense of optimism there huh? because it, it's actually looking at it objectively and saying, hey, there's some really bright spots here and it's also an opportunity, yeah. right? And, and the Himalayas were known as uh, the third pole in a way because the, mm -hmm. it packs ice so much. So sure. the water that comes out of it feeds India and Bangladesh, that's like a, over a billion people that depend on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was working on that and then I was at NUS um, and the opportunity came by to join the Center for Nature-Based Climate Solutions to okay. work on uh, understanding carbon and see the sequestration that happens in the forest ecosystems, but in Southeast Asia. Great. And part of me is like, wow, I've worked in temperate and alpine ecosystems. I've, I want to now work in tropical ecosystem. And that's, that's another beast altogether. I can imagine. It's, it's, it's a different density, a different biome. It's, it's a completely different thing. Hiking different thing. for a field site in, in, in Nepal is very different for hiking to a field site in Indonesia. But you've got altitude and you've got temperature differences. And but you it's have, cool. Yes, exactly. It's nice. There's a lot but more humidity. In Indonesia, the, the forests are thick. Like yeah. there is, the forest is loud. It's, there's music mm -hmm. and there's chirping. And then the, the trees are massive. The, the, like, I remember my first time in a southeast tro tropical forest here. I was like, I, I wow. couldn't see the sky. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is where the carbon is. Yeah. This is the, the climate mitigation, the climate change mitigation potential in these tropical forests is insane. And so yeah. that's, I've been part of the team that's been working on how to improve the science behind improving the estimates of um, estimating carbon in these ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And it's a very exciting work. That's fascinating. Yeah. Thank you for that. That is, that is, it, it resonates with me in terms of that curiosity that just leads you on a winding path, like you said, to discover ultimately your calling, right? And I can tell from that introduction, the passion that you have for the various different ecosystems. You mentioned ecosystems a number of times and also looking at it from a solutions perspective. Yeah. This represents an incredible opportunity to value nature and to effectively help to quantify that. That's an integral in order to, to achieve that outcome yep. to, to, in terms of the value piece. So that's fantastic. Um, maybe we take a pause here, just have a quick drink. So cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. You like that? Oh, lovely. Is that? Awesome, awesome dude. What a fun <laughs> intro.